Hey guys, welcome back. This is your host, Phil from thecage.com. Today we got LG Q92. For now, this is only launched here in South Korea, but this is like a toned down velvet. The velvet retails for around $750. Meanwhile, this is significantly cheaper at around $350. Yet, it retains most of the specs like Snapdragon 765G, 6 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, 48 megapixels of wide angle camera, and 4,000 milliamps of battery. And that means there must have been some cost cutting decisions and we're just about to find out precisely what they are. Let's start with the packaging. It's a pretty simple one with a big emphasis on the letter Q. On top, there's a 5G logo because this is a 5G phone, and it makes it very clear that they included a jelly case inside the packaging. There are some important specs like 48 megapixels of rear and 32 megapixels of front facing camera, 169.4 millimeters of full vision punctual display, which translates into 6.67 inches of full HD plus panel. Surprisingly for the price point, it's got stereo speakers and it is mil spec certified. All right, under even that is a little plastic separator along with this packet that contains not only the jello case, but also the screen protector. And of course, there's a quick start guide with the SIM card tray removal pin. And at the bottom level, we have the USB-C cable. This is type A to C and a quick charger, well, a fast charge charger that can output up to 16.7 watts, although the phone itself can only accept up to 15 watts. And there is a box containing a pair of headphones, which looks really cheap. I assume this is one of the major cost cutters. This feels really cheap, feels empty. I'm pretty sure it sounds horrible. All right, the phone itself. It looks pretty simple with punch camera on top, fingerprint reader combined with the power key on the right hand side, volume rocker and Google Assistant hotkey, USB-C port, headphone jack, and a speaker along with the microphone. Again, this has dual stereo speakers, so one on the bottom works along with the one on top, giving you the stereo sound effect. And on top, you got SIM card slot that also accepts micro SD card and the secondary microphone for noise cancellation for your phone calls. And on back, this is not glass, rather this is finished with plastic, but doesn't feel that cheap. It's acceptable for the price point. Comes in three different colors, ceramic white, mirror titan, and mirror red. On top as a 2020 phone, of course, it's got a number of cameras. Let's start with the 48 megapixels of the main sensor. That's a wide angle, eight megapixels of ultra wide angle, five megapixels of depth sensor, and a complementary two megapixels of macro lens, along with the LED flash on top. There's nothing spectacular, LG logo, no wireless charging, no weather protection. But here in South Korea, it does come with LG Pay, an LG equivalent of Samsung Pay. The internals are pretty much the standard as well. It's got Snapdragon 765G, 6 GB of RAM, 128 GB of expandable storage, 4,000 mAh of battery, all running on Android 10. Now, the reason why I call it standard is because there are so many phones with the same platform and same overall specs. LG Velvet is almost identical in terms of specs. The Galaxy A51 5G is also very similar, along with Xiaomi Mi 10 Lite 5G, and even the Motorola Edge. They all have Snapdragon 765G or equivalent, 6 to 8 gigabytes of RAM, similar amount of storage, similar amount of battery, and those 48 or 64 megapixels of high resolution cameras. This is the de facto standard of mid-range 5G phone in year 2020. Now, something that the Q92 stands out from all those phones is the mil-spec certification and the dual stereo speakers. But also one other thing that you can spot out of all these phones is that the Q92's panel is Distinctive. It's got a lot more green tint to it and the colors look inaccurate. Of course, all the other phones come with the OLED display and OLED and IPS panels tend to look differently through the eye of camera than the human eye. And thankfully, they give the option between natural, vivid, and custom in which you can adjust the color temperature and even the individual RGMB levels along with saturation and hue, which is a very rare option to find. Aside from that, the interface is rather simple. It's the same old LG UI that looks weird really similar to the Samsung's One UI. Try comparing it with the Galaxy A51 5G. The way it looks, the menu letter getting big once you scroll to the top of it, even the camera interface, they look a little too similar to be a coincidence. Anyway, back to the interface, there are a number of interesting options like the sound, quality and effects right here where they have their own 3D sound engine instead of the DTSX 3D surround that they've had for years. There's a customizable equalizer, there's a screen recorder, dual app, and of course the LG's famous knock-on feature where you can double tap on the screen to turn it on or off. But what LG emphasizes the most is those pair of cameras. Now let's look at the interface as you can see it's 
pretty similar to a lot of other phones. Uh, you can tap on this icon to go 2x, 1x, or 0.5x of ultra wide. Of course, it doesn't have the telephoto lens, so the 2x zoom is all digital. You can either have pixel bin 12 megapixels or full 48 megapixels of photo. It has a nice focusing sound. You can take 4K UHD videos. It's also got what LG calls the creator's package, consisting of time lapse, ASMR recording, voice bokeh, and cartoon slash sketch camera that can give you some interesting bokeh effects. The camera seems fine. Uh, everybody uses the similar or the same sensors these days, so I'm pretty sure it's going to perform just as good as a lot of competitors with the same sensors. Now, I mentioned the price differences from the Velvet. It's almost half the price and the cost cuttings there must have been. At a first glance, you can see that the Velvet's got much nicer display. It's also got a fingerprint sensor on the screen rather than on the side combined with the power key. But interestingly, Q92 has a higher resolution of selfie cam of 32 megapixels, which is double the resolution of the Velvet. While the Velvet has higher Bluetooth version 5.1 compared to 5.0, higher fast charging capacity at 25 watts compared to 15 watts, it's got wireless charging, pen, and dual screen support, and it's got nicer materials overall. This is finished in glass, while this is polycarbonate plastic. Oh, and there's the always on display. So the $400 of price differences, those little cost cutting decisions, are they worth it? Is it as good as Velvet? Or rather, is it finally LG's value phone that actually works? We'll spend more time figuring out what it's like in real life and get back with the review very soon. In the meanwhile, if you got any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. You can always meet us on Instagram and Facebook. We'll see you guys later.